confession. I remember as a child growing up that I used to get in quite a bit of trouble. And you know, they say with great trouble comes great punishment. But as a child and, and sometimes even as an adult, you know, it's, a, it's our instinctive reaction to just try and avoid that punishment, even though we know we, de we deserve it. And I remember as a kid, the time when I learned how to say I'm sorry and, and, and what that truly meant, you know, the art of saying I'm sorry. And, and when I learned that, it's like, it's like a whole new realm of possibilities and opportunities to do wrong had now opened up before me. Now I have my very own, you know, get out of trouble free card. And, and my I'm sorry to that point had never failed me. Especially, you know, when I combined it with the trembling voice and, and the cute teary eyes. And, and I remember many times we brought before my mum and she said, Dean, you know, did you do this? And, and did you do that? And I'd be like, Mum, yeah, I done it. It was me. It was me that done it, Mum. And then I would pause and, and I would look at her and put on the baby face and then I would say, but I'm sorry, you know, I'm so sorry. And it's funny because as you grow up, it seems as if the, the verbal punishment starts to hurt a lot more than the physical punishment. And it got to the point where I wasn't sorry anymore. I was just afraid of the consequences. I was afraid of the punishment. I was afraid of the fact that I knew that what I'd done was wrong and so therefore I deserved to, to be hurt. I deserved to be punished. And so that would then, that would then give way. That would then give way to me saying I'm sorry. I simply confessed because I was scared. How do I know that? Because, because I wouldn't confess if I was never caught. It wouldn't even cross my mind to say that I was sorry, to say that I messed up if no one had seen me do it. My, my confession wasn't born out of, out of love. My confession had nothing got to do with sorrow or for feeling like I'd done wrong to someone or all it had to do was, was me trying to really escape punishment. And the Bible is very clear. It says, perfect love casteth out all fear. Let me ask you a question. Would you really confess your sins if there was no punishment for them? Can you honestly say that if there was no hell, if there was no eternal punishment, no consequences for the things that you have done in your life, would you still fall to your knees and come before God and ask Him to forgive you? What, what drives you to confess? Is it escapism? Is it, is it that wanting to get out of trouble? Is it that wanting to, to have the guilt and, and, and to leave it, to not have to bring it to God, to, to escape condemnation? Or is it a love for God and for who He is, for, for what He's done for you? You see, when you think about it, it's not so much the criminal things that are hard to confess, but the ridiculous, the shameful, the embarrassing things. It's easy to say, I'm sorry, you know, for punching this person. It's easy to say, I'm sorry for, for stealing this bank. But it's the things that nobody sees. It's the things that are done in, in privacy. It's the things that you do when no one's around. It's the things that you do in your, in your bedroom, under your sheets, when, when no one is there to hold you accountable. Those are the things that are the hardest things to confess. And we're told that true confession, true sincere confession, is always of a specific character. It always acknowledges the particular sins that you've committed. Now some sins are done in public and therefore they should be confessed publicly because you, you've done it in front of other people, you've hurt other people. So now it's on you to tell them that you're sorry. Some sins, some sins are done in private and therefore that's between you and God but every sin should be confessed to the letter, specifically what it is. You see, so many of us, we, we, blu we, we blush to confess the sin, but we never blushed to commit it. We have, we have so much pride when it comes to confession that we feel that if we confess, we'll, we'll lose our dignity. But what I'm saying is, is away with, with, with that false dignity, away with that, that false humility. It's not true dignity, it's pride. It's not true dignity, it's pride that tells you that you cannot bring that to God. That tells you that, that it's too embarrassing to bring to God. That tells you that, that God's not going to accept you if you bring that to Him. And you see, sometimes then we're, 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 we're actually comforted when we're convicted. What do I mean? Sometimes we know that we've done wrong and, and then we think, Oh look, there's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. You know, that's okay, God, God is still speaking to me. But, but don't confuse conviction with confession. 
You see, it's one thing for your alarm to go off at five o'clock in the morning, it's another thing altogether to get out of bed. That's why, that's why the Bible says that he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them, he shall have mercy. In other words, it's not enough for you just to confess your sins. It's not enough just to be sorry for them, but you must actually forsake them. Now here's something, you of yourself, you can't forsake them. You of yourself, you can't hate the things that you love. So when you bring them to God and, and you say to God that you're, that you're sorry, you can't change your own heart. You're confessing, you're confessing of your sins is, is no substitute for forsaking them. You must confess them to God. You must plead for Him to forgive you because of what Christ has done for you. But you must also ask for God to put a supernatural hatred in your heart for the very things that you once loved. You see, when you confess your sin, you're not informing God of something that He didn't know. You're not showing God something that He didn't already see. But rather you're agreeing with Him that He was right. You're agreeing with him that that's wrong. You're agreeing with him that you need to change. The beauty of it is that when you uncover your sin, God will cover you. But when you cover your sin, then God has to strip you bare. When you ask for pardon, then God will give it to you. And that doesn't mean then that you need to wait for some, some sort of supernatural feeling, you know, some, some emotion where you're like, yes, I've been forgiven. You know, where something comes over you and now you're like, yeah, God's forgiven me. What you need to do is by faith accept that the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and He is just. In other words, He almost has to. In fact, He has to. He has to forgive you of your sin. It says that He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, from every single thing that you've done wrong. His forgiveness is not merely a judicial act. What do I mean? When God forgives you, when God forgives you, He doesn't just say it's okay. It's not like when you're in court and, and, and you're pronounced innocent and, and, and He sets you free instead. Instead, when He forgives you, he promises to change your very heart. He promises that the very things that you've done wrong, that He can help you now to hate them, that He can change the heart that once loved them. It's not merely a judicial act, but when He forgives you from sin, He not only pronounces you forgiven, but He reclaims you from sin. When God pardons you, when He takes away the punishment that you deserve and he, he then treats you as if you've never sinned in the first place, what He's doing is He's reclaiming you as His. You see, there's many things that we do that are wrong. There's many things that are wrong. And let me tell you this, there's only one sin that God can't forgive. The only sin that God can't forgive, whether it be rape, whether it be murder, whether it be violence, whether it be adultery, whether it be blasphemy, whatever it is, the only sin that God doesn't forgive is the one that isn't confessed.